So I've got myself a Lanshan One tent from Campolis. So while the weather's nice today, I'm gonna get it put up in the garden and have a go at seam sealing it. Here it is. I've got it with the footprint as well, just in case I need that. And then this is the tent. So you've probably seen these before, loads of people have got them. But it packs down really small. We have a quick look on the scales of truth. So 713 grams for the main tent. So that's obviously without poles or anything. So I've actually bought myself some new trekking poles. These are Glynnis or whatever they're called, I don't know. Got them from Amazon. And the reason I got these is because they're telescopic rather than the trichology ones that I've got already that fold up. And being telescopic means that they'll be able to fit onto my rucksack a lot easier. Let's just see how heavy that is. So that's 297 grams for the pole. For the seam sealer, you'll be surprised to know I've just grabbed some from Amazon. This is proper silicon tent sealant. You can't just use any random sealant on these tents because they're sill nylon. Your bog standard sealant for tents won't stick to the sill nylon material that 3FUL use. So you have to use some specifically for sill nylon tents. And that's what I've got here. You can make your own, but I didn't want to mess about doing that. I'd rather just buy the real thing and crack on with it. So let's get outside and have a look. I'll take some sort of kneeling pad as well, because I'm getting old. And we'll just need the one pole, because it's obviously a lamb shank one. And I don't know if Ruby's coming or if she's just going to stay there and keep the sofa company. She looks a bit tired, so let's crack on. It goes without saying that because I want to go out into the garden. There's somebody out there strimming and cutting the grass, so I'm not going to let that stop me. We'll carry on. Just excuse the noise and I'll try and cut it out as much as I can. I've just loosely pegged out the footprint. The one in the middle there goes to the back of the tent and then you've got a peg on each corner. Right, let's get the main tent on. Here's the first attempt of the camera will focus. Let me get in the shade, you might not be in the chance of seeing it. It's not perfect by any means, but again on each corner on the tent itself we've got a bit of solid string on the bottom and then an adjustable piece here that you can pull tight. I've got points on each side that I need to put guy lines onto, so I'll do that in a minute. And it's the same plastic clip for the doors that you get on the Lancham too. I'll probably swap these out for some bungee and separate the doors from this guy line here. If it pulls this vent out, it's nice to be able to pull that further up and out. So I need to do something with these door holders as well. They are elastic, but there's not a lot on there, so it's quite awkward to get those fastened. Come on in. So just the one small pocket at the end. I don't really use them anyway. And then around the inside, there's like a mesh panel. It runs all the way around between the outer and the bathtub. That's to allow any condensation that you get to run down and hopefully go out through that mesh rather than getting onto your floor and onto your stuff. In terms of seam sealing, the stitching coming through on these guy out points. And I think I'll need to do down the main seams as well. And I don't know about the stitching here, whether that needs sealing, but we'll see better from the outside. Let's go have a look. So yeah, these are the main seams running down each corner. So I've read the instructions. You get a brush in with the sealant, just a little tube here. Basically just says shove it on the seals and leave it for three to six hours to dry properly before you fold or squish the tent away. 
Let's have a go. So it took me 20 minutes to do a first seal. Obviously put as much as I could around the seams on this top bit. Then I've done all the main seams all the way down on the outside and the three guy out points. I didn't do the seam right across the bottom because I don't think that would go inside the tent anyway, even if it did leak, but I'll try it and see how it goes. I've got a lot of the seam seal left, I don't know if you can see that, but if you're doing a Lanshan 2 with that, I'd probably buy two packs. By the time I've gone over and double checked everything, filled everything in as much as I can, that's probably all going to be gone. So I'm going to do that now, then we'll leave it for a few hours and we'll give it a test. So yeah, that's the tent sealed now, I hope. I'm just going to leave it for probably three hours and see. It's quarter to two, so we'll leave it to stand. Hopefully it'll dry properly. I'll probably get the hose pipe on it to make sure it's worked. I've saved myself a little bit of sealant as well, just so I've got some in case I need to patch the odd bit up. And I want to make sure it is fully waterproof before I do any mods to it and make any more changes. So fingers crossed it'll be all right. I should probably mention as well why I bought the Lanshan one. I'm looking at putting together a lightweight setup to do some multi-day trips in the spring next year. And as you probably know, with camping gear and wild camping stuff, the lighter you go, the more expensive it can be because of the materials that are used. And they probably add some sort of tax on because they can call it ultra light. So I am trying to stick towards the budget end of stuff. I've got the Lanshan one that obviously I'm trying out now. I've got a light sleep mat as well that I'm gonna try on my next camp. And then I'm just gonna build it up from there over the winter months and hopefully by spring I'll have a light-ish setup that I can use. I think the Lanshan looks good so far so as long as that seam ceiling works I think we'll be good to go with that. Like I said earlier I got that from Camperless. I think that's my fourth tent from them now. So I had the Lanshan 2, the Floating Cloud, the Taiji 2 which I'm still testing out and now the, the Lanshan 1. So yeah fourth tent, never had a problem with them, prices are quite reasonable. They're a little bit more than AliExpress, but stuff comes within seven to 10 days. So I would rather get things quicker and know that they're coming from a, a company that I trust than give my money to some seller on AliExpress and kind of hope the best. The Lanshan one on Camperless is 142 pounds, I think, for the khaki one. That's with the footprint. So I'll put a link below if you want to check that out. I'll put a link to the seam sealer as well and the trekking poles in case you want to have a look at those. And yeah. It's just a matter of waiting now. So yeah, I've got three hours to kill now, so I'm going to chill, watch a bit of Londoner Outdoors, I think. If you haven't seen his channel yet, I'm sure you have, but if you haven't, check it out. And I'll bring you back when I've got a waterproof tent. Right, it's been just over three hours. I can't wait any longer, so let's go and have a look. So this is the last scene that I did. It does feel a tiny little bit tacky. This is the bit I did first and that's dry, so it's, it's on its way. I think while it's up, I am gonna make a few changes. In terms of bits and bobs that I need, I've got the three guy lines here that came with the tent that I'm gonna attach. I've got an extra peg here. That's gonna be the one that I use for the door bungees. And then I'm hoping I've got enough bungee cord here to do those four corners and the two doors, but we shall see. So I'm going to start with these doors and what I'll do is take the loops off one at a time, undo those and then swap for a piece of bungee that will go through this same loop here. And I'll make the loop a bit longer so that it reaches down to the floor. I'm just going to put that peg in roughly to see how long these loops need to be. Bear in mind that this does need to be stretched to give you some tension. So I think that should be enough. And then while I'm doing this, I'll cut the other one. So they're both exactly the same length. And it's always worth as well, just getting a lighter and burning the frayed ends. Stop it fraying anymore. I've already done it on that side, but it just takes second just to do that it seals the end and stops it fraying anymore so that's both of those done so like i say what that's done now is free up the skyline what i'll try and do is unpick this knot here remove this 
line tensioner and keep this guy line as long as possible so that I can peg it out as far as I need to to pull that vent up as high as I can. I'm going to do the knot. I can keep that clip in my spares box. And the same for the tensioner. I'll keep that and then try and undo the loop. And then all I need to do is put a loop on the end that I'll use for the peg. And then we can pull this further out. Okay, so now I'm going to do these three guy lines. First thing I need to do is untangle them somehow. Yeah, they are all the same length. I didn't know if you'd have a shorter or longer one for the back. And all I do with these is again put a small loop on the end. Then I feed that loop through the mounting point on the tent. Thread the tensioner through the loop. Then that pulls it tight onto the tent. and means that it's quick and easy to remove and replace in future if you need to. So I'll try and show you with one hand. There's my loop. Push that through and then get the tensioner end. Pull it through the loop and pull it tight. And then all I do is pull some slack through on here and put my peg on the tensioner end. And I can adjust it as much as I need to and lock it off with that line lock. So that's those all done. Just to show you, once you pull that through properly, the knot goes through the loop itself. So you can pull that really tight. I'm now gonna have a go at these corners. I'm gonna loosen the top string a little bit and remove it and keep hold of it keep it tight and then remove the string from the bathtub and then I can tighten that up again so the tent's still in place and I should be able to get underneath it and pull that off so I can keep that as a spare piece if I want to and again I'll use this one as a bit of a test to work out how long this bungee should be I think about there I'm just going to pinch that I don't know where it is cut it Singe the end. And then before I tie this on, I'm going to use that as a template to make three more for the other corners. Okay, so that's the first one tied on again. I'll loosen the top and keep it held with my hand. Put my bungee on, top string back on, and pull it tight. So I think that's worked well. We'll go around and do the other corners. Just realised one thing I did forget is I need five bits of bungee because I've got this one needed at the back as well. So there we have it. So just to recap, I've swapped all of the solid string connectors to the bathtub for these bungee cords. I've added the guy lines, but obviously not pegged them out yet. I've added bungee to the doors and decoupled it from this main guy line that goes up to the vent at the top. We needed an extra peg to hold those doors as well. And I've seam sealed all of the main seams down the side and the guy out points as well. And now this is where the fun starts. So I'm going to get the hose pipe out and we'll see if this seam sealing has worked. So we've had a good five minutes of pretty full on rain simulation. You can see we've got plenty of water retained on the surface of the tent. So confidence is pretty low, but I'm gonna try and sneak inside and see how much water's in there. This one's followed me in of course, but I don't wanna to speak too soon and jinx it. Hang on. So far, floor is dry. The guy out points all feel dry. I can't feel any water or drips or anything at the apex. The only thing that might be an issue is these seams along the top of the mesh here because I haven't sealed them and as the water comes down hopefully it will run straight over that seam. We might get some in there. So I think we're looking okay. What I'm going to do is leave that pitched up in the garden overnight let it dry out a bit and then I can see if the water runs down into anywhere and gets inside anyway. So obviously I'm not gonna give you a verdict on the tent until I've tried it out properly and camped in it. If you wanna see my verdict on the tent, hit that subscribe button and you'll get notified of all my upcoming videos and I'll catch you in the next one.